We should be sailing right now, but instead we're in Great Anagua, the southernmost island in the Bahamas, attempting to fix the headboard on our mainsail so we can continue our passage to Panama, where we need to arrive by June 1st, before the start of hurricane season, mandated by our insurance. Apart from a few cruisers, customs, and a Morton salt factory, there's not much here. This is our first real test in self-reliance to see if we have what it takes to succeed as cruisers. The headboard is made up of two aluminum pieces sandwiching the sailcloth in between. On our fifth day of sailing from Miami, the shackle ripped right through the aluminum and the sail fell from the halyard in the early morning hours. We are going to use Dyneema to tie a large ring to the plate for reinforcement and we'll attach the shackle to the ring. First, the edges of the aluminum need to be softened with the Duramel so they don't cut the Dyneema. So I'm trying to recreate the same with this ring and then we'll lash it all around. What's the deal? Well, the deal is that now if I take this, you know, this is like secure, but it's gonna do this, see? Yeah, that's no way out. So I need to secure it down somehow. So I'm gonna drill some holes here and use seizing wire to keep it down. Okay. I don't know how else to do this. You know, because if I put holes, it's gonna, and I use regular Dyneema there, it's going to chafe on the metal. The only function of the same way is just keep this down like this. Sure. Shouldn't be that much load. Okay. We uh, lashed this big ring with, uh, I think this is like 6 millimeter Dyneema, which is 12,000 pounds for strength. This is like uh, super strong stuff. But then I was afraid that this ring would flop back and forth, so I, I, I tied it down with uh, some high strength stainless steel seizing wire to the, uh, to the aluminum plate. Hopefully, most of, most of the work is going to be done by this, and this is just going to meant to hold it flat again. Hopefully, it will work. Finger crossed. Now I have to go up there to retrieve the halyard, and I'm going to use the top and lift. Raising and lowering the sail, we saw nothing was entangled and looked ready to go. Alright guys, this is how a dehydrated carrots and celery looks like. We're gonna try to make it full slow in there and see how that comes out. Look. These are like a few months old, right? Yeah, at least. Yeah, let's see, we're gonna hydrate it. Great right now is fantastic. But again, bugs and flies are just we probably killed a hundred flies today. At least. There's another one here. Oh, oh. In fact, last night, I was drinking a nice glass of wine and I ate a fly with it. That wasn't too good, <laughs> yeah. but it's good. I realized it was in my mouth. It was gross. <laughs> it's horrible. All right. And why are you so happy? Oh, I fixed the sale. The sale is done. I'm very happy with the repair. But this dehydrates. I'm going to cut the... Uh, cabbage. So this cabbage here is uh, at least three weeks old. So cabbage lasts a long time. So if you, if you keep a couple of bowls of this cabbage in your pantry or on your passage in the Pacific, um, it lasts a long time and you can have uh, some sort of vegetable. We love coleslaw. We love coleslaw. It's easy. And um, warm up anything and it's fibrous good for passage so the dehydrated carrots 
tastes just fine. Tastes like carrots. And uh, mixing it up a little bit. And now Kristen is gonna add, add her secret ingredients. So, what do you think? So I think that the carrots should probably soak more than just 20, 30 minutes. And they'd be probably best used in a soup, a sospito, something like that. For coleslaw, they need to soak a little more. They're a little leathery. I don't know, totally edible, but you know, I'm a little feeling about my food. <laughs> Good job. We're gonna take this, this the stern line. Okay. Right? Hi, good morning, how are you? <laughs> With the headboard jury rigged and a decent weather window, we shoved off the dock to continue our passage to Panama, about 800 nautical miles. 12,000 pound strength Dyneema was used for the repair, so we had faith it would get us to Panama, but you never know. With only a week before our June 1st deadline, we really didn't have time to face any more obstacles. A huge thank you to our patrons. We are so grateful for your support. If you'd like real-time updates and additional content, consider joining the Harbors Unknown community on Patreon. And we are sailing to Panama at 9.5. Pretty much immediately, the apparent wind speed was over 18 knots, so we furled the screecher and pulled out the jib. If you're enjoying this video, give it a thumbs up, leave us a comment down below, and be sure to subscribe to our channel. So, Fab, what's the update? The update is we are between Cuba and Haiti. In fact, we can see Cuba over there. Faint, uh, mountainous uh, shade. Haiti is a little bit more far away, we can see it. But it's there. The wind is almost not strong, and we have to keep in mind that our speed is going to decrease a little bit. We are going with a full jib and a reef. Uh, we're going to change to this creature. It's a better skill for downwind. Yeah, we just turned the corner, right? We just turned the corner. The trooping speed is 20, so we'll be okay with the creature. The apparent wind speed is 14. We're good up to 18. Should we do it? Let's do it. What's our speed? This is so much more comfortable than sailing upwind. I'm glad we got to take a break after five days because we were jostled around. <laughs> but this is awesome. I think it takes sometimes being uncomfortable to really appreci appreciate when things are good. Because if it was good like this from the get-go, I don't know if I would appreciate it as much now. <laughs> I'm really happy that we were able to tackle the issue with the headboard on the mainsail and fix the problem so that we can continue on because I can tell you there was nobody that was coming to help us. And that's really what it takes in this lifestyle is just figuring things out even if you don't, if you've never been faced with that particular challenge before, you need to figure out a way to overcome it. And I'm really proud that we were able to do that. And I think it will hold until at least we get to Panama and we're able to continue this journey. 
And just like that, we settled into passage life, enjoying calm moments, the waves rocking us with a steady hand, or holding steadfast with consistent winds of 27 knots, thankfully from behind. On one hand, relishing sunsets, clear starry skies, and on the other hand, wakening suddenly during the night to reef during a squall with 35 knot winds and trying to synchronize movement with the boat as it surfs up and down 12 foot waves. Hoping to catch a fish when passing through sargassum patches, listening to audiobooks, and cuddling with Yoda. Sail changes and reefing. Life is boiled down to the essentials out here. It's not always comfortable, but it's uncomplicated, and the simplicity envelops us like a warm, salt-encrusted blanket. Today is day three, and overall it's been a great day of sailing, right? I mean, last wind, night was rough. Last night was super rough. Super rough. We got two squalls, you know, separated by a few hours, up to 35 knots of 35 wind. 35 knots of wind, suddenly. Yeah, just suddenly. All of a sudden it starts to build, build, and within like, I don't know, less than a minute. Um, we've got, you know, 35 knots of wind and the first time we had to turn and take the second reef, right? So... Yeah. The second time was so fast that by the time we got ready to change yeah. the sail plane, it was gone. Uh, yeah. Winds have been, what, like 20, 22 knots pretty consistently all day. Yeah. We've got the second reef in just because we're just being cautious so we don't have to constantly think about... I'm taking you know another yeah, reef yeah. if we only had one we're about to have a liner which is like lunch and dinner we try to just do two meals on passage so it's less work less uh cleanup delicious salad here Today is day four of our passage and it's about 5.30 p.m. We've gone about 138 miles and have averaged 7.9 knots. The winds have been 15 to, I guess, 23 knots or so. And last night was super, super windy. We saw winds consistently at 27 true. So we have two reefs in and we just kept them all day long because the wind has been pretty erratic like even earlier today the wind all of a sudden shifted from the east to the southeast and it went to 30 knots so we just want to be prepared for these periodic squalls um, we don't want to get caught with a full main up the waves have been absolutely huge today it's probably the biggest waves of the entire trip some i swear they're like 15 feet tall um, but overall, you know, we're doing well. We're looking forward to getting to Panama big time, especially Yoda. Hopefully tonight will be a calm night. We have about 183 nautical miles to go, so hopefully we can uh, maintain this speed and we'll get in tomorrow before dark. The winds lightened up a bit, so we were able to shake out the reefs at daybreak. Look ahead, the sea is calm, and I know we've been through a lot, but just wait. Mm, wait for better days to come and carry us like wind in our sails. So is that better? Much better. So finally the winds have come down a little bit, the waves are a lot, a lot more rolly, 
less confused and uh, we can sail downwind that uh, where are we going? We're doing anywhere between like seven and nine knots. I yeah. guess it depends if we're going down waves or not. Along the waves, the waves are still big, so they stop the boat when you climb them. But, uh, yep, 19. Wind are variable, variable in direction, variable yep. in speed. So finally, I think the last 100 miles we'll get some, hopefully, big across. We'll get some retrieve. <laughs> Last night, I made some overnight oats, and I've never done this before, but it sounded perfect for the boat that you could put oatmeal with some milk and yogurt and soak it overnight, and in the morning it's ready without having to cook it. We prefer oatmeal warm, so I'm heating it up now and adding some more of the ingredients, some peanut butter, honey, cinnamon, allspice, and some seeds. But this is a great thing for the boat because then you don't have to use a lot of propane. Then at the end, I like to add some walnuts. Mm. Good, I'm glad you like it. I love it. It is such a beautiful morning. Finally, some more enjoyable conditions. Still some waves, but really nothing to speak of. And we're flying the, uh, the creature. We saw what looked like rain in the distance. We furled this creature. The wind basically completely died. So we said let's just drop the main because it's just a risk because you never know with these squalls if there's going to be high winds that come through. We're about 50 nautical miles from our destination Linden Bay in Panama. <laughs> we are so excited to arrive. Looks like we're going to get there at like one or two in the morning so we'll have to kind of make a decision there if we're going to go and anchor. It looks like there's plenty of room and plenty of depth. The water's like 30 feet apparently so looks like it would be safe to go in we are surrounded by rain on all sides basically storm is passing right over us it is pouring cats and dogs you can't see anything we put all the electronics in the oven pretty intense Thankfully, though, it is washing all of the salt off. And just like that, the storm is gone. The sun is getting closer every dawn. With no wind and a sea smooth as glass, I took some time in the final hours of our passage to reflect on the past 12 days. The discomfort of confused 12 to 15 foot waves, waking up suddenly to 35 knot squalls and having to turn the boat into those angry seas in the ink black night to reef. In those moments, I wasn't fearful, only determined to do what needed to be done. I'm finding trepidation often lives in the anticipation of the unknown, but when you keep your head down, focused on the task or the goal, you find the flow state, immersed in the moment, and more often than not, only good comes from that place. Together as a couple, we had overcome this challenge, passed the test of self-reliance, and would soon be arriving in Panama just two days before our deadline. Having sailed approximately 1,250 nautical miles, the first stop of many along this voyage we have undertaken, traveling slowly to immerse ourselves in other cultures, learn about different ways of life, leaving as small a trace as possible, and sharing that with you. Captain! We're finally here, approaching the marina. I'm really looking forward to getting the off the boat. I know, right? Yeah, no, 
We have officially arrived. We are tied up at the Linton Bay Marina and it feels amazing. Yeah, beautiful breeze. Oh yeah. Finally steady. I got off the boat. Can't wait to shave and do a little work on my goatee. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. It's great. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.